So first and foremost, I want to thank everybody for coming out today. Um, as a as someone who has done one of these, I can tell you that from 7 to 7.20 is the most nerve-wracking time that a politician can go through because you always think, did I buy too much food? Is anybody going to show up? And so, you know, I, I told Peter, don't worry, they will be here, and it's good to see all of you out here today in support of, of Peter, and more importantly, not just in support of Peter, but in support of his family and in support of the community in this adventure that he's about to undertake. So I know that we're running a little bit behind. Um, we have some time built in, so that's good. There was some construction. I'm glad everybody was able to make it. But let's start with an invocation. I'm going to ask that Pastor Scott Collins of Bethel Church come up and lead us in the invocation. Well, good morning. You know, uh, Edmund Burke is quoted as saying that all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. It's an honor to stand up here and represent Peter because he's a good man. He inspires people. He inspires people to get involved. He inspires families. And I can't think of a better person to jump in and begin to represent us as somebody who has a good moral compass. Too long have good men shrunk away from the fabric of politics. And we find ourselves here with laws that make no sense, with people disenfranchised and with the most vulnerable having zero voice. Good men need to jump in, and that's why I know we're blessed to have somebody like Peter ready to take up the fight. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come and to ask for your blessing on this time. And Father, I pray, pray for that mantle of leadership to be placed upon Peter. Lord, I pray that you would let your Holy Spirit travel with him and give him wisdom to make good, right, moral choices. To be a leader, to draw people towards the moral imperative that you bring to all of us. And Father, I pray that you would protect he and Holly's marriage through the course of this campaign, that you would draw their marriage closer as he draws people closer to the choices that bring the fabric of America great. Lord, I pray that you would help him inspire Peter with the kind of choices that give a voice to the vulnerable, that uplift the widow and the orphan and that make our communities stronger and safer to live in. It's your blessing we ask in this time, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As I was wheeling away from the podium, I thought it was a good thing that we do have extra time built in because it's going to take me a while to get here every time. So thank you for that. Um, you know, the pastor brings up a great point that oftentimes campaigns are somewhat easier on the uh, person campaigning, seeking office. Their family, on the other hand, and those around them have to offer that emotional support and kind of stand in the background sometimes. And I, I know that uh, Peter's family is very important to them. So continue to uh, think of them in your prayers and thoughts and just lift them up because this will be you know, it's always a challenging time because it takes time away from the family, and I know how important Peter's family is to him. Um, now, I want to bring up what I call the face of the operation. I want to bring up Sophia and Antonio. <laughs> and they are going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you could stand. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, 
one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. <clears throat> Antonio has a bright future. He knew more than I did. He turned the microphone off before he handed it back to me so you didn't have to hear all that crackling. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Uh, Miss Lewis County was scheduled to sing for us today. Unfortunately, she's having a, a voice issue, so we wish her a speedy recovery. Um, I want to take a few minutes to recognize guests. I am horrible with faces and names, so please forgive me if I miss you. Uh, but I know I just saw Commissioner Bobby Jackson walk in. He just walked in in the back right there. John O'Callaghan, where's John? John is with the uh, City of Tenino City Council. I've known John for years, great guy, glad that he's here. Um, most, I'm, I'm on the list, so I have to read my name. I'm Jonathan Meyer, I'm the Lewis County Prosecutor. We also have Dennis Dawes, where's Dennis? Hi Dennis, City of Chehalis. We have Arnie Davis, our Treasurer. And where's JT Wilcox? JT, I saw him earlier. One of our representatives, Mark Anders with the Port of Chehalis. Richard DeBolt, I know Richard's here. There we go, Richard, our representative as well. Robert Wheeler, he's, with, he's been with Napa Vine for years. <laughs> um, Sue Lund from Centralia. She, oh, there she is back there, perfect. Chad Taylor with City of Chehalis. Thank you, Chad. Uh, Cameron McGee, City of Centralia. Edna Fun, Commissioner from Lewis County. Julie Shafley, Port of Centralia. Diane Dory, our assessor. Rob Snaza, the Lewis County Sheriff. He's in the back there. Brandon Svensson from Winlock. Tom Krausen, Fire District 5. Senator John Braun, I know I saw him. And Gary Stamper, Lewis County Commissioner. Scott Tenney, our clerk. And if I missed anyone else, I apologize, but stand up if I missed you. <laughs> That's right. I also want to give a special shout out to Alan Haywood. Where's Alan? I, Alan was introduced to me as the smartest man in politics. So we are honored to have Alan here and have him joining us in support of Peter. So the next person I wanna bring up is, is JT Wilcox. Uh, Richard introduced me to JT this morning and it was funny because JT and I got to talking about when we first met. In 2010, JT was seeking office the same time I was and we went to a campaign school together and um, actually learned a lot. It was very informative. And we talked about how it seemed to be somewhat of a successful class. And when I first met JT, I couldn't quite figure him out because he was a conservative from Thurston County and they don't make too many of those. So um, right away, I took a shine to him and he's done some amazing things since he's been in the legislature. So please help me welcome JT Wilcox. Well, thank you very much for that uh, introduction. Actually, I'm really jealous uh, of people that live in uh, Lewis County because uh, nobody is ashamed to be a Republican in Lewis County, are you? No. And we're not ashamed of it. Actually, I'm from Pierce County, just barely across the river. We're not ashamed of it there or in Thurston County either, but one of the things that we really struggle with uh, is uh, we can turn out a great group like this uh, for Republican candidates here, uh, and we've got big parts of the state where the other side has so successfully demonized Republicans that you have people that lean our way, you have plenty of business people that lean our way, vote our way, but they are afraid to be part of the Republican Party. And one of the missions that all of us have is we can't just retreat into our enclaves here uh, in the rural parts of Pierce and Thurston County and the great Lewis County where everyone is proud of the things that they stand for, we have to be sure that we are reaching out uh, clear across the state because we do not want to be a minority party. 
our whole goal is to be a majority party and instead of just pushing back and slowing down bad legislation we've got to start passing our own we've had a little example of that and thank goodness uh, you have probably uh, the best politician in uh, Washington representing you in the Senate and I'm so sorry to see the only guy that gives him competition as <laughs> the, the best politician in Washington, uh, Richard Leaving. But uh, I just want to recognize uh, here Senator John Braun. No one's making a bigger difference than John Braun. Well, I'm here to um, introduce my friend and longtime uh, mentor, Richard DeBolt. Uh, it was a sad day when he finally confirmed that he was not going to stay in the House of Representatives. And I hope that you all go back and uh, watch his announcement speech on the floor of the House. And I, I want to give you a, a little bit of a, of a oh, sort of behind the scenes story. Richard and I have sat together uh, on the House floor for eight years. And we get texts from people telling us to shape up sometimes when, when we're in the TV shot. Uh, I've learned so much from him. Uh, sometimes we're not as serious as others think that we should be. And uh, because we're always in the same shot and Richard is up with the microphone all the time, we have this little game that we play. Uh, whenever one of us is speaking, the other one has agreed to look up with an adoring look as if we are <laughs> listening to a speech by Socrates or Churchill. <laughs> And it is so hard to give a speech when you know that Richard is doing that to you. <laughs> but uh, Richard gave a, a little bit of a tearjerker of a speech. And uh, I knew that he'd go back and look at that on TVW and a lot of his friends would. So uh, when you go back and look at that, pay attention because one of the things that I'm doing, it was a really good speech, but I wanted Richard to remember me. So right in the middle of it, I took off my glasses, wiped my eyes a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> there are a million stories uh, about Richard, uh, and I'm not going to tell them all. If you uh, watch uh, probably the last day of the legislature, you're going to hear a bunch of uh, good ones there. But Richard has mentored so many people. Um, for sure me. Uh, I know he's been uh, mentoring Peter for many years because he knew that this day was going to come. But he's made an impact clear across the state. There's probably no Republican in our generation that has touched as many people as Richard DeBolt has, uh, always in a positive way, um, in an, uh, an extremely memorable way. Uh, I know he's going to stay in this community. He's going to keep making a, a difference. But uh, I'm just going to take off my glasses and wipe my eyes one more time that uh, Richard's not going to be sitting next to me uh, another term. But thank goodness he's done such a great job in mentoring his successor. Would you come up and introduce Peter, please, Richard? We shattered the mystique. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny, I've been uh, your elected official since 1997, uh, so 24 years. So it was a great opportunity for me to do a lot of things in my life. And one of the things, though, that uh, happened many years ago was I was the house leader. I had JT's job for 12 years, I think. And during that time, I had to work on winning elections. And I met this gentleman in Bellevue who was working on the, as the state party ED, and he was working on the Dino Rossi campaign. Remember, we won that one? And um, <laughs> twice. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I met this gentleman and was super impressed with him. And he was able to bridge a divide between all the elected officials. And if you don't think that takes some tact and talent, you have no idea how much air congressmen suck out of a room and and being able to balance a governor in congressional races and and of course the most important races the house races and the Senate, sometimes important senate races um but he was able to do that he managed people very well fast forward he decides that he's going to become a lawyer and go to law school and do all these great things and i'm at the rooftop and he shows up at the rooftop there's a shameless plug for a rooftop over here. Um, and he comes in and I'm like, well, why are you here? And he's like, I live here now. 
and it was great it was great seeing him again and we reconnected and we've become very good friends and our community having somebody like peter fill in and and become your state representative will be incredible um, i think about what it takes to navigate olympia today it's a lot faster and a lot rougher than it used to be which makes me sounds like a curmudgeon because i'm going to talk about the good old days yeah. but um and he's like a 2.0 version of i think everything that i could do and he's going to be faster stronger swifter better and one of the things that you need to understand there's three things it takes to win a campaign and and one of them is a strong family and he has a strong family and holly is such a support for him and he second is you gotta like to communicate you gotta like the doorbell and how many people know peter likes the doorbell ha, ha, parades peter loves this stuff and uh, so he'll do really well at that but last thing he will do better than i think anybody imagines is fight for us in this room fight for lewis county and when i say fight i choose that word carefully because we are in a fight our way of life is under attack all the time and we need somebody who can go there and not only stand their ground but also navigate in order to make bad things palatable and get good things through and it takes a special craft to do that and so many people go to olympia and come and go and very few i think will hit the ground as well as peter will he is, he's, I think, going to be tenacious in this campaign. He's got a lot of work ahead of him, but with our help, he'll get there. He'll win this election, and then he can continue the legacy of strong representatives in our state. He's a great friend to everybody in this room. He's a great friend to me personally, and he's a wonderful advocate for our community. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Obano. Stand up. It's a better photo. Thank you, Richard. Um, with the pat in the back and the whisper in the ear, good luck. <laughs> um, Richard, JT, natural speakers, they always come up here. They never have notes. They always know exactly what they want to say. And normally when I'm at somebody else's event, uh, I don't have that problem either. And then I'm at my own and I get nervous and I say, I better just write down a few things just so I can glance down to make sure I don't forget anybody. Uh, but I wanna start off by thanking the women in the back. Uh, Cindy Godsey, Shelly Ford, Crystal Bailey um, did a great job um, helping me with this event. So I wanna give them a round of applause for helping me. And, and, I, and I know Crystal gets nervous about this, but any, anybody who knows me and has worked with me at my law firm knows that Crystal uh, is somebody who uh, keeps me in my lane. Uh, and she's done a great job to, to help me, to get me to this point, to allow me to balance my work life and all the things I do in the community. Uh, I wanna thank uh, Scott Collins. I, I don't know what I did to deserve such an amazing invocation, but I appreciate your friendship and I appreciate those words because um, they, they mean a lot to me. And, and Jonathan has been a friend of mine for a long time. Uh, I appreciate him and, and JT and Richard and, and Jay Vandersoop, who you'll hear from in a bit, uh, for being here and supporting the campaign and supporting uh, this event. Uh, there are so many of you um, that I look around this room and, and I wanna thank, because this campaign is not just about issues. It's about finding passion for solutions. Finding solutions is the key because uh, I've worked with some of you at the Hub City Mission uh, in the Severe Weather Shelter. I've worked with some of you in classrooms supporting uh, our students and our teachers through watchdogs and PTOs and, and, and others I've worked with at the Centralia College Foundation uh, working on things like, you know, students who are college bound and students who are career ready and working on the SWIFT Center. The, that's my shameless plug for the Southwest Washington Flexible Trades Center, which is something that is really groundbreaking in our community, and the groundbreaking is actually next Friday. 
<laughs> but you know what's really interesting about all these organizations and all these issues? That regardless of race, gender, party, religion, we work together on solutions. And that's been so important to me in my life. And it's great that Richard brought that up because early on in my career, I, working for the party, it was about finding solutions, whether it be for candidates, for our party, or be just for campaigns. Because sometimes people get so bogged down in, in just the issue and they dig their heels in so deeply that they can't dig out. And our world, our community needs people who can help us dig out and find those solutions. <laughs> Lastly, and probably most importantly, I want to thank my wife and my children. Um, they're the reason I'm running. Uh, we all get those aha moments in life. Um, I loved being a lawyer. I love being a lawyer. I love playing in politics and, and talking about issues, the radio station. I love all of that. But when you uh, have a child, and I can tell you the moment it happened to me, it was July 2011, and that little girl was born. And then my son was born uh, in 2012. When you look in their eyes and you say, what can I do to make our community a better place? That's when that switch went on. And that's when I took involvement in the community and volunteering to that kind of next level, where I said, I want to leave a legacy for them that they can stay in this community and they can raise their own family. Because I was looking around, thank you. I, I was looking around and I, and I saw problems not problems that were insurmountable, not problems that we need to give up on, but problems that had solutions if people would work for them. And that's what I wanted to do. So really, I wanna thank my little girl, my little boy, I wanna thank my wife, because they're the reasons why um, I give so much back to this community and why I love this community so much. Um, I can talk about issues, specific issues till I'm blue and orange in, in the face. Uh, but again, this campaign isn't just about issues, it's about solutions. We all want better education. We, we want that for our children. We want better jobs. Uh, we want more opportunities. We want to protect our freedoms. We want to protect our way of life. The history and tradition of the 20th District and Southwest Washington, we want that. Right? We all want that. And, and that's something that every person in every party wants to see. How we get there is that's the solutions. How we get there. We may have different ways to get there. But I know if we work together, we can do that. Uh, I want to talk about kitchen table type issues and kitchen table type solutions. Uh, like many of you, I feel like Olympia and the majority party in Olympia is so focused on fringe, extreme issues. They're so focused on only those living in the shadow of the Space Needle, they're forgetting the rest of the state and they're leaving us behind. And that's why I think it's important to get back to the basics, get back to talking about what's important to our community, what's important to our families, building strong families, building strong communities. We need government that's accountable to working families, small businesses, and taxpayers like you and I. That's something we need to see, and we're not seeing it. We need communities that are affordable for working families, that are going to provide more opportunities for my kids, my neighbors, the children I see at schools, the, the children who are losing hope because they don't see those opportunities, and safe streets. We need safe streets, not only for the individuals that live in our cities and in our communities, not only for the businesses that operate in those communities, but for our law enforcement officers and our first responders. We need to protect the people who are protecting us. And it's about time we stand up for not only safe streets for us, but safe streets for them. So over the next eight months, nine months, I'm going to be traveling the 20th Legislative District. Uh, I'm going to be listening. And I hope I can count on your support. I hope I can earn your vote. And I want to thank you all for being here, uh, supporting me and my family. And I look forward to spending the next 
at least the next half hour or an hour here uh, trying to meet every one of you and talk about those issues. And then onward to Election Day. Thank you for being here and thank you for your support. That's what I love about Peter. With Peter, you don't have to worry about politics. You just, you know the person. And I'm not supporting his campaign. I'm supporting Peter. And I trust Peter to do the right thing because every time I've talked to him and, and uh, we've discussed issues, that's his goal. He wants to do the right thing for the community. And I think that that's what we all want. Uh, when I heard Richard was going to retire, I was nervous because that's a, that's a big void to leave filled and, and uh, Richard's done a great job along with Senator Braun and all of our folks that represent us in addressing many of the issues that we see here in Southwest Washington and Lewis County specifically. And then I heard Peter was going to run and I thought, okay, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And I still have that confidence in Peter, um, but he cannot do it alone. So I would like to invite Jay Vanderstoop to come up and speak. Jay is one of those guys that whenever I need something, I just call, he will carve time out of his day, and I know that I'm always gonna get the sage advice, and sometimes even if I don't wanna hear it, you're, you're gonna hear what you need to hear, right? And I'll say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. He's like, yeah, no. Um, but he's the type of person that you want on your side, and I know he's on Peter's side, and I thank him for being here. So this weekend I noticed my hair was getting kind of long. So Monday I called the lady who cuts my hair and they said she's out today. In fact, she's out for the next three weeks. So my first thought was, yeah, I can just live with it. Then I remembered, uh oh, Wednesday morning I'm at a Peter Arbono event. <laughs> so I decided to go to another place to get my hair cut. <clears throat> and I thought first, Peter, about going all in, right? Because I've learned in advocacy, the first thing you need to do is show empathy for the person you're advocating for. So I thought about it for a minute. But I knew <laughs> the cue ball wouldn't go well at home. Um, but more important, I decided I could do you more good by just having cut short because it's my job to talk about us giving our haircut, <laughs> right? It's Peter who's going all in, not us. So there's the pitch. There's never, I'm thinking this morning, 131 years since we've been a state, there has never been a legislature that's even close to this one in terms of running your school district, telling your kindergarten teacher what they're going to teach, the specific curriculum, telling your local government exactly who they can cite where within their own community, telling your business exactly how you're going to manage your own employees, telling nursing homes who they must and how many people and how many beds they have to have open and if they don't, they get less money. It goes across our entire society. There's never been anything like this in terms of the impact the Washington State Legislature has on the life of every person here and every person in this state and the future of our state. Okay, so that's what's at stake. And what do we have to do, those of us who aren't Peter here? Not much, really. Not much. We have to first write a check. I mean, in comparison to what he's going to give, that's not very much. Hopefully we can help doorbell and make phone calls and that sort of thing on the campaign. So hopefully we can take a little haircut in this effort, but he's all in. So I'm asking you to start today by writing a good check to get this campaign kicked off well. Thank you. Okay, that's the presentation for today. I know that Peter, um, you know, while he, Peter loves talking to groups, he would like the opportunity to speak with you individually as well. So if you have any questions of Peter or just want to get to know Peter a little bit better, 
Um, he's in private practice. He doesn't have to go anywhere for quite a while. So <laughs> he will. <laughs> wow. He, sorry, that was that was easy. The reason that he can afford that time is because Crystal takes care of his schedule. And for those that don't know, Crystal used to be my paralegal along with Natalie. They both work for Peter now. And I am firmly convinced that's how he gets so much stuff done because I realize now that they're not in my life, it's like, wow, they did a lot. So uh, Peter would love the opportunity to stay and talk with everyone. So please make sure you take some time, talk to them. More importantly, take some food. Most importantly, take some signs. We need to make sure that we get the word out there that Peter isn't the best option for 20. He is the only option for the 20th district. Peter loves this community. He loves us. He loves his family and he will do right by us. So join me in supporting Peter. Stay and talk to him and thank you for coming.